Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers from around the world, talking with makers from around the world. Here's Jamie Page, Steve Twidell, Chris Cute, and now your host, Richard Morley. Hello, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good times, whatever time it is, and wherever you're listening, join me as always, Mr. Chris Cute. Howdy doody time. And Mr. Steve Twidell. Um, morning. He's not really good <laughs> this evening, so uh, <laughs> might, might be might be an interesting one, just from Steve's point of view. And also, Jamie Page. How y'all doing? <laughs> I, I nearly, I was going to say, I'm talking of interesting, and then in a nanosecond, I just went, no, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's practicing his his American accent. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> We, we, we don't have a guest this week, but we do have a, a topic, um, and we're presuming that if you've you know actually looked at the thumbnail on YouTube or on uh, whatever platform you're listening to us on at the moment, you've read it and you already know it. So we will go straight into this week's special shout-outs and thank yous. So starting off very quickly, we've got Wave Cycles, John Wills Woodworking, Hippo and Bear Makes. That's an awesome Instagram account by the way i know steve not steve chris probably wouldn't have seen that one but trust me chris it's one to follow i believe um, the redsmith moonshine metalworks my my bestie but not steve's bestie mcgonagall Sterling <laughs> Day. the other steve someone someone's going to know how to pronounce this and i'm going to be embarrassing myself very quickly charlie kukurek is it charlie, charlie K- K- kasorik yeah. kasorik is his last name cocoon there's no way I would have been able to pronounce that from how it's spelled. But anyway, Charlie, thank you. Um, and also our good friend, Anna B. Everyone loves Anna. Anna B. Anna Concrete. Anna B. Um, <coughs> the stone woman. Uh, she's awesome. She's absolutely awesome. I love she Anna. is awesome. I love Anna. Um, Andrew McQuillan and Harneal Media. So a huge shout out. Thank you. Big up and besties, all of you. Um, don't forget, you can get in t- touch with us over on pretty much all the socials and comment on the videos and all the rest of it. So we do like that genuinely. As always, this evening's podcast is brought to you in part by Yorkshire Grit, the Woodturner's Abrasive Paste, our good friend Chad over at Mancrafting, Pam from Highland Boxes, and of course, the silent, silent partner, High Neal Media, who helps us out with our website hosting, etc. If you want to find out a bit more about us and them as well, head on over to our website, makersinternationalpodcast.com forward slash sponsors, and all the information is on there because Jamie puts it up and he's good at that sort of stuff. Is that right, Jamie? I am. I am. Well, he has to be good at something, I suppose. You beat me to it. I was so going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, if you don't watch out, Jamie will tell you he can scroll saw a website. So just leave it alone. Let's, let's, just, <laughs> let's just move on. <laughs> Swiftly on. We will go back to the main po- topic tonight. So um, if you are operating heavy machinery or haven't slept in... Um, you know, a good few hours. You might want to have an extra shot of espresso in your coffee, double up, and um, next Wait. Pro Plus, because we have the exhilarating, exciting, and albeit damn right important topic tonight of Article 13. Yeah, if you don't know what Article 13 is, where have you been living? Well, Richard, it's a warehouse. It's a warehouse yeah. where there's loads of aliens, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it was actually a television show, wasn't it? Um, no, no, that was Warehouse 13. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, Okay. Did, did you want me to get to the questions this week or do you want to wait for those and do those later richard i don't care either way oh oh now you've thrown me now um chris do we have any any listener questions from the week <laughs> you can edit that bit can't you <laughs> no i'm not gonna why would i do that i mean this is just us being foolish as usual um i do i've got four of them so once again pick a number one two three or four richard i picked last time okay the jamie seven, pick a number seven Steve, there's a reason I'm not asking you, obviously. <laughs> two. Number two, Garrett Clawson. Garrett, nice nice to hear from you, by the way, buddy. Um, uh, from Portugal. Yeah, he says uh, he's got a serious question, for, a serious reason for asking this. He never Uh-oh. tells us what the serious reason is, but he just has the question. But we're going to take it that this is serious to Garrett, okay? Um, the question is, uh, what do you makers uh, like to hear in the background while you're working? Silence, loud music, and if it's music, what kind of music, and how does it reflect on your concentration, etc.? Does distracting music, even television, if you have one in your shop, have a place in the workshop? Yes, no, what's your feelings, what do you listen to, whoever wants to start, 
Go, because my answer is going to be real um, boring. Normally, when I'm scrolling, it's normally uh, a podcast. Is normally what I listen to. Turning, it's normally I normally listen to something along the lines of either that it's kind of a mixture. Normally, it's uh, Pink Floyd, The Wall, and I just put the the album on and just listen to it all the way through um, both discs. And once the both discs are up, put them straight back on again. I guess the follow-up he's asking to that, Jimmy, though, is um, have you ever found it to be a distraction to where you took your mind off of what you were doing? Okay. Never. I've always always got a sign on. All right, Steve, your turn. I I listen to anything that drown out the voices in my head. (laughs) The little people people talking to you? (laughs) Yeah. Um, No, I I generally uh, stick on uh, shameless plug. Kill yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. ahead. (laughs) I I put on Spotify and put on my playlist and just let it go for it. Um, And anything that plays, I listen to it. And then I... The only thing that distracts me is my my singing over the top of what's going being played in the background. But, but other than that, that's no. Uh, I like, uh, yeah. If I'm obviously, unless I'm live, but uh, yeah, when I'm working in my shop on my own, doing my thing, any music that I can rock out to and just boogie to on the lathe, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to assume Richard's answer is going to be similar to this, but I think we all probably have the same thing. The minute something begins to distract my attention from um, a spinning blade, I tend to turn off whatever that is before I continue with the spinning blade thingy. <laughs> you know, it's like I, um, but anyway, Richard, uh, what about you? Do you listen to anything when you're in the shop? I, I, I do actually. Um, if I'm, if I'm using machinery, um, like power tool machinery, I tend to have um, radio on and and of, if i'm working on site or in somebody's house or something like that I, I tend to go with the radio purely because well two reasons really um first of all i can safely assume that there's going to be nothing um and you'll be able to uh, um, relate to this chris nothing untoward on air no you know bad language or anything that's likely to offend the the clients um, because personally, I think it would be unprofessional to have like, I don't yes. know, NWA playing in their house. So if I play it on the radio, then I can be you know, pretty sure that something's like that. <laughs> Likewise, if I've got uh, power tools running, then you can kind of dip in and out. So that you turn the, the noisy right. machine on and you're not really missing anything. You're not listening to a conversation. If I'm working on something which is fairly quiet or isn't going to be noisy, then I tend to have a podcast on. If not, I tend to wait and when I'm driving um, and have the podcast on because there's nothing kind of to and you can sort of you can tune out, but you don't kind of get distracted by it, if that makes sense. Um, If I'm videoing, go on, Steve, I'll let you because this is I just made up a segue here and this is too good to miss. So I was just going to say on a side note, Richard, because I used to work in houses as well. um, Have you ever scared the absolute shite out of a child? By starting up a power tool <laughs> when they've been close to them I, I it's a horrible feeling you kind of go right next thing you see this child standing there wetting itself going <laughs> <laughs> um, not not so much like that, but I, either that or, or sitting in a corner going, <laughs> just shivering yeah. I, I, i've done it from i've made people jump um but using like nail guns and stuff like that um yeah. but also pets they they yeah. tend to get um, a little bit um, kind of iffy around that, but um, what I was going to say was because this is I literally just no one's going to believe this, but I literally just thought of this segue. If I'm videoing something, I tend not to have anything on because you know I don't want potentially uncopyrighted things in the background of my videos. But um. Oh Which, no, there's there is a segue, but I haven't given, I haven't given you my answer yet. But we'll get back to that, Richard. Hold on a second. Okay, all right. Uh, you can edit that. Out. My answer is going to be quick and clean and easy and simple. The uh, the God's honest truth, and I, I I'll put my hand on a stack of Bibles to this. I have never in my shop ever listened to anything else except peace and quiet and the tools. Uh, you have to remember, guys. Where my background is, I wore these for a living, and peace and quiet. To this day, I still find like a weekend away <laughs> it's like so i don't listen to anything in my shop ever i don't turn the podcast on i don't turn music on it's quiet and the only noise in my shop is the tools so boring answer but uh getting back to what you said last what was that again richard 
Oh, what well, with the with the uncopyrighted uh, music oh, in the background? Yeah. That, uh, hey, and by the way, today's topic has something to do with that, doesn't it? It it does very neatly lead into today's <laughs> topic of, uh, of Article Thirteen. Gosh, we're clever. <laughs> Well, how unlucky is that? Just like the number uh, 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 thirteen. <laughs> yeah. Are we, we going to so talk we're... about purely Article Thirteen? Because there is a sort of a wider issue surrounding this, isn't it? There is, but yeah, articles do, as well. Do you mind? I have it written down here. Do you mind if I briefly kind of tell people who may not be aware of what Article Thirteen is? What Article Thirteen is? Um, I've... Can, yeah, because I'm not really a hundred percent. If I'm perfectly honest, I don't think anybody is, even the people writing it. Okay, I'm going to source this information back to YouTube because this is basically what YouTube had to say about what Article 13 is. And in a nutshell, I think they pretty much covered it. Um, <coughs> Article 13 is a part of a proposed copyright legislation in the European Union created with the intent to better protect creativity. It seeks to find effective ways for copyright holders to protect their content online. Now, YouTube says that they are they support the goals of Article 13, and it's aimed to help creators and artists succeed. However, the current proposal that of Article 13 that is uh, that is was written by the uh, European Parliament will create a large unintended consequences to creators and viewers alike. It threatens hundreds of thousands of creators artists and others employed in the creative in the creative uh, um, in the creative economy but also the creative community um, and there's a number of reasons that YouTube has taken the stance on it and we'll get into that later but article 13 is something that I think the best way to look at this is there the European Union is trying to find a way to litigate the internet so that copyrights are protected better than they are today. And I don't think anybody would have a problem with that. If you've ever had a video stolen and uploaded to Facebook or Instagram or someplace and and you've seen somebody make money off of work that you did, you understand the frustration behind that. And I think everybody would agree that some sort of control on copyright would be applauded. However, the approach that they're uh, taking is being a lot of people are saying it's going to create more problems than it actually solves the problem. So that in a nutshell is what Article 13 is all about. I mean, and that kind of makes perfect sense because it doesn't matter what the legislation is. It doesn't matter what the, um, the the rule becomes or the reason that that rule is required in the first place. It's always going to have unintended repercussions. I mean, you've only got to look at you know, air travel. You know, there's 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 reasons why you can only carry little silly bottles of shampoo in your hand luggage. Legitimate right. reasons. But of course it's it's a real it's it's a pain it's always a pain and that's always going to happen i think bottom line for really is whatever happens however it ha it kind of plays out tough kind of kind of it's yeah that's, that's a hard hard pill to swallow admittedly but at the same time i i genuinely think this is actually a storm in a teacup dare i reference adpocalypse or any of the other numerous things. Yeah, if, if, I think I think if any of the uh, if there are content creators out there listening to this, there. I mean, I, I know Red Smith's out in the, in the chat right now, and I know he went through living hell with the last little uh, YouTube debacle when it came down to um, you know content that they felt was advertiser friendly, and then we all found videos that we were putting out that were getting blocked from revenue, um, and it, you had to plead your case, and then YouTube would get around to you when they decided to get around to you, and they go, oh yeah, okay, and a week later they'd say, yeah, that video is fine, but by then everybody who was going to see it saw it. And so what was the point? Um, because it actually, in that in that case, it took money out of the creator's pocket. But this proposal, this legislation, what is going to actually, what they're saying, the unintended consequences of this uh, article, if it's passed as it's written, and it's not law yet, but if it's passed as it's written currently, um, we won't face that problem because YouTube and other platforms like it are simply going to block your video. Nobody will ever see it. Um, so all that hard work you did to get a video done, may sit on the shelf for a year or two years. And, and not only that, beyond that, they're saying that they may have to go back and look at all of the existing content on their platform and make a determination as to whether it can be seen. So there are even your existing content that you have on your channel right now, you could see a bulk of it go away. 
because YouTube will block it. And, and yeah. this is and this isn't just YouTube. I don't want to put this on YouTube, but since we're on YouTube and where most of these people are familiar with YouTube, that's kind of where we're focusing focusing the conversation today. Yeah, and going going by Ro Robo Arts uh, question there, he says surely it won't affect YouTubers with original content. The question is, what is original content? Yes, and it, that's not a question that you, that we have. Um, what, if this goes through, that's not a question that we have the prerogative to answer. That's going to be left up to exactly. YouTube to answer that. And so it's being taken out of your hands as a content creator as to saying, this is original content. Well, then YouTube could look at it and go, well, maybe you say so, but we have questions, so sorry. That, yeah, that, that, that to, could what, happen. What, what's to stop Richard from turning around and saying, well, I did that first. That's mine. I did that. Do you know? Yeah, it, so I, I, th that, I think that's it, where it's going to get shady and very dark. I, th um, I think from that point of view, Steve, um, if let's say, for example, you do a video turning a snowman, a banana. A, uh, okay, a banana. Yeah. So you've you've turned that video in your workshop, um, just you talking, you on your lathe with your tools and your piece of wood, and you turn a banana. If I, from what I'm existing rules and these rules as well if i go into my workshop with my lathe and my piece of wood and i turn my banana that's not what they're talking about here that's this no, from, from my understanding of this this if i then take your video and you know have it in a like a, a picture in picture in the side and i'm like right okay so steve so if we look at this bit so steve's mounting it between centers so i'm going to mount it between centers and, blah, 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 and i've got your imagery or your audio in my video yeah that is where the um yeah and you know it and it could be even be something like like you and i or uh steve and you or jamie and you may have you know a little facebook you know private conversation hey you do, do you mind if i do this and put this in my video and jamie might go yeah man sure mate go right ahead i don't care and then you do so but, but youtube doesn't know that agreement exists and they're gonna go i can't no we can't do that bye you, you know um yeah. and leona faith is correct Le leona say that each country has up to two years to implement these laws if they actually get instituted the way they're currently written and she's right but Leona, here's the deal. Um, two years from now, when every country is doing this in the EU, we're going to have people pulling their hair out, and that's two years too late to be talking about it. That's why we're talking about it today. Yeah, I think yeah, also, all I was going to, I was going to say, um, Steve, was the, not with the laws. What's going to happen in the short term? Probably when it, you know, when it, it does come about, if the day happens, and it is YouTube because they're liable. And they've got so much content, well, not just YouTube, but all the these platforms, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, because they're all party to this as well. If the vid, if they're liable, if they're the ones likely to get, you know, the bill at the end of the day and have to pay it up, they're going to take the, the the kind of protective defensive approach and say, right, well, we won't have any of it. And then you'll have to jump through the hoops to get the video on it just like you have to jump through the hoops to join like the partner program on youtube or to you know to yeah. get your verification tick on that pla platform mm -hmm. you, you, you've mm -hmm. got to kind of earn it for want of a better expression well how, however they do it the unemployment line is going to get a lot longer yeah well you know what i don't want to um i don't want to spin this the wrong way and i i think we and bef before we get too far into it and people gather an impression i i don't want people to think that you know well, at least for, I'm speaking for myself that that um, that I'm being, uh, you know, fed my spoonfuls by somebody else. A lot of that, a lot of what we're hearing in the ruckus about Article 13 is coming from these content platforms that we, we discussed. It's coming from YouTube. It's coming from Facebook. It's coming from Reddit, um, Instagram, because these companies um, stand to lose money and a lot of money if this legislation goes through. Now, if this wasn't going to, you know, hit the pocketbooks of YouTube, would they be making a big deal about it? I doubt it. Um, I mean, there might be other creators. Um, people like Philip DeFranco may still be talking about it because it just doesn't seem right. But YouTube wouldn't be making a push because you know what? They don't care. YouTube cares about this because it's going to hit them in the pocketbook. So let's let's keep in mind where a lot of this hype is coming from. And I think it will help us kind of move on with a clear head as far as what is important and what isn't. I mean, I, I was watching, uh, I forget the channel now. It's definitely one of the ones that's in the description. Um, that was done by two guys who do a lot of like newsy breakdowny type stuff and they they put it out in quite a good way in so much as 
it seems to be that if you're doing your own thing, yeah, if you're in your, I mean, we're, I'm assuming everyone listening to this, or the majority of people listening to this are going to be woodworkers, makers, metal workers, leather workers, you know, creators of physical items that put videos on YouTube. If you're making your stuff in your workshop, a lot of these um, kind of new rules won't necessarily be applicable because unless you're putting i mean we've all been through the whole music audio thing before already haven't we right you know, having things pulled because we we were using yeah we were having claims and disputes and things like that and that that all you know was just a a ripple but now most people i mean certainly myself i'm now moving over to using all the youtube um yeah library audio library stuff well, even though like, back then, even the people that were using the YouTube library stuff, some folks were getting flagged even then. It was just, it was the, yeah, the, tra I'll, the transition with anything is always got its, you know, there's always things that go wrong with the transition. I mean, YouTube is relying on computers to govern their system and the computers very rarely get it 100% right, right out of the box. It's, they, there's a lot of tweaking that goes on. I mean, ask Gerald the Red Smith about the videos he didn't make any money on. He'll tell you. Um, and, and, and that's, like I said, that's, that's kind of always going to happen. But it, that sort of goes yeah. back to... I mean, I had it. It's, it's kind of like it's frustrating. It's annoying, but th there's nothing you can do about it. So you just have to, you know, jump through the hoops. I think, and and come out the other side. So if we're if we're making videos where we're just doing our thing in our workshops and we're using the you know the the clean audio as the, the I think the the term is that is uncopyrighted or copyright allowed or. What's the, what's the phrase? Well, well, no, it's, it's well, it, free. That's it. Let's let, well, let's put it this way: um, the clean content that YouTube can automatically recognize is the clean content they provide to you. If you have an exterior source source for your music, royalty free or not. I got a funny feeling that, it, that in a transition period like this, that music may raise an eyebrow because it didn't come from YouTube's clean library and so they have to investigate it but rather than investigate it the computer is going to bump it and say let's have a human look at this so um this this is one of the things that i uh i actually wrote down like obviously I, I wrote down music as a highlight now um when it comes to the the royalty free music there's plenty of makers like for example uh eloy waylight creations z8 yep. fabrications yep they personally have their own royalty free music yes you've got to give them rights to say look these people yeah. done the music in the description of your video but they're not a specific website that you pay say five dollars a month for a specific certain amount of tracks right but you, you can go to and say okay you've got the rights to that track right yeah dale uh, forsyth does the same thing yeah go ahead yeah exactly yeah you know so it, it's going to be even harder because you've got to prove that you own 100 percent of that video and it's yes. going to be nigh on impossible with the tracks that, like you say, Dale, Ryan, uh, Zach, and Eloy are going to be giving you. Right, and we're talking worst case scenarios here, guy. I mean, I don't want, and I don't like again. I don't want to over dramatize this today. I'm just. I think it's important to look at where this actually could head, uh, but it hasn't yet. Uh, and we can get to what you can do about it, and maybe get your voice heard. You know, later on in the day. But we wanted to cover all these subjects because. I don't think a lot of people are aware of the implications that this has, because this not only has implications on the creators, this has implications on people who are just your your fans or your viewers. Um, because obviously, if they're enjoying your content and they love what you do, and all of a sudden YouTube is pulling it, that content is no longer for, for there for them to enjoy. So as, as a user, this affects you. Um, it to, to the extent where the amount of content that was once available to you is going to be no longer there if you know the hardcore you know deep end of this actually occurs uh so it's it's not just the creators that are that are going to be complaining about this there's there's you know the viewers too have a reason to be concerned mm. steve mm. over at uh, moonshine metalworks um he's put an interest steve the moonshine metalworks the youtube <laughs> channel um i said is it Never is the it. article is the article 13 um thing only affecting people using music no and, no and that it's is not no no be because they're talking visuals as well now how far down the rabbit hole you take those visuals um i get the impression that from everything that i've heard from the various sources the visual side is more to do with if you are pulling like say you did a 
a movie review and you pulled little clips and segments from like a, a movie trailer because there's loads of those that happen pre movie release you only have yeah. to put in the yeah. late but if you're pulling that and doing a breakdown then technically you're using the the visuals from warner brothers movies or sony yes. entertainment or whoever it is so that's likely to be and, um, well, and, and you used to be able to get away with that as long as you didn't try to monetize your own video well, um, that, that's the other thing is because you but can it won't it, matter here. Yeah. Fair use. Yeah. Um, because the fair use ruling still will still apply. Absolutely. The the the, the sort of um, how do how do they initially work that out as to how does the computer know how much is fair use? And I think initially it's going to be blanket, <laughs> like nothing, and and then I, probably over time it will start to trickle through to be more human common sensey well i, I um, think that the way to look at this is because youtube and um instagram facebook the, you know the, the reddit the sites that we talked about because w the way it sits right now if we use copyrighted material in one of our videos we're liable for the use of that and we have to pull the video down take it to whatever the case is. it's it, the liability is on us if this goes through the liability in a roundabout way, it comes off of us, but it puts it squarely on the shoulders of the platforms that provide the content to you. So YouTube now becomes the one that's liable. Um, and so does Instagram, Facebook. And all. So what you end up doing is you're going to see these guys do what you would expect them to do. They're going to see why they're going to cover their behind. Uh, and rather than be put into a litigal uh, um, situation where they are liable for copyright money for on a video that you put up on their site, they're just going to block it. Um, and so it, it starts to get under a microscope when it just, how is YouTube going to sit there and look at things individually and decide, yes, that's okay. No, it's not. They're, they're going to do initially, they're going to do it with a very high expectancy of not letting things through just because they're going to be nervous that they may be liable for that content being released on their platform. Um, and if they've got 28 countries in the EU standing behind this, they're going to cover their butt and just, you know, they're not going to let things happen. And, it's, and it doesn't matter whether you're, you're in the European Union or if you're not in the EU, this still will affect you because um, a lot of my videos or your videos will, will get blocked in the eu and so that's going to affect my, you know my viewership your viewership things of that nature and possibly even revenue potential down the line but as a viewer you are not going to see things that would normally be uploaded from the folks that we love that are in the eu to you because their videos are going to you know if there's any question about it they're going to get blocked as well it's censorship it's censorship guys and it's it's counterproductive to what the eu is a, is attempting to do with article 13 and that's the point people are trying to make it's counterproductive. Everybody I, wants to see content creators that hold copyright have a right to maintain that money for themselves, the content for themselves. Nobody's going to argue with that. But how they're implementing this law could actually affect the release of content worldwide. And that's just um, that's not a good thing for anybody. So for, for you as a creator, Chris, in the US, this won't affect you in terms of... Yes, it will. Your, ha, well, hang on, let me finish. Having your video blocked, your video will still go up. But in what will US. happen is it will still go up to the US and all the other countries that the EU haven't got jurisdiction. Correct, over. yes. But your video won't be available to me Us. or Steve. Right. In, oh, thank in, God. As long as you, as long as you're, as long as, well, I mean, Brexit's going to happen, but as long as England remains in the EU independent, and I think you guys are actually going to have, we talked about this, Brexit is actually going to happen before the two year time period is up on this law if it actually goes into power. So it won't affect anybody probably in the UK if it does indeed go into effect. But there is 28 other member countries, or they call them states, uh, in the EU that it would affect. And that's, that includes France, exactly. Spain, Germany, you know, I mean, Italy. But in, indirectly, it will affect you because you're, you'll get less views because yes. of the people that can't view it because of where it's blocked, right. which is actually a very similar situation to what there currently is with Germany. Um, I've got two videos that I have on my channel, which are only short videos, um, which have a Frank Turner um, soundtrack, audio track to them. Right. Yeah? And they are not viewable for people within Germany because of some audio library availability like a similar sort of thing so um well you know you, be, you can't watch actually, those videos yeah 
YouTube actually addressed both these questions that we're talking about. Um, and if you'd like, I can read to you their official stance on the situation. They address not only what it would mean if you are in the EU, but it would mean if you're not in the EU. In the EU. Um, and the question that was asked to them was, what does this mean uh, to you, either as a creator or as a, a viewer, um, if you are in the European Union? And their response to that question was, if you are in any of the 28 member states of the EU, YouTube and other platforms may have no choice but to block your existing videos and prevent you from uploading new ones in the future, unless you can prove that you own everything in your videos, including visuals, and sounds. If you're if you're not in the EU, it means that YouTube and the other platforms that we've talked about already um, will likely block your videos, including the existing ones that you currently have, to users in the European Union if there's a partial or disputed copyright uh, information on your video. So, one way or another, this law is going to affect the content that gets put out and gets and is able to be viewed. If in some way, shape, or form. And I don't think, and that's what people are hollering about, that's not what this law or this article was initially intended to do. But that is the consequences of how it is currently written. Well, I think us creators should write Article 13.B356. Yeah. It's which stating, is stating that we should all start invoicing YouTube for the privilege of using our videos. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty sure that there's something in the terms and conditions that allows you allows them certain rights over your video terms and conditions are non and void now because they're <laughs> going to kick my videos off <laughs> that's true if i have nothing to lose i have nothing to care about so yeah. why not so, so <laughs> youtube watch out i'm billing yeah. you yeah. there's actually a uh, there's actually a question from Matt in the uh, chat from uh Al -Sak -Sak. Al -Sak -Sak. Uh, and you know what? There's one from the Redsmith too, but I'll let you go. go ahead. He says, "Has Chris got a split contractual permission from the Fenway Sports Group to use the Red Sox logo as part of his live stream for the video?" That's was something I was going to get into, um, but it had nothing to do with the Red Sox. So Al, bite me. Uh, but if you have a if you have tools in your shop that have a uh, that have a brand name on them, Dewalt, Makita. Uh, Black and Decker. I mean, the same question would apply. Um, now, are those companies going to come after you for copyright? I seriously, seriously doubt it. But is YouTube going to question whether you should be able to show that? In there? I don't think that will be a big deal. I don't think they're going to get down to that minutia. But every time I say that, I've ended up being wrong. Um, so I have no clue. Um, and I don't think it will matter. But I think if you're wearing... They did mention in somewhere, and I, I, I believe it was in a a Philip DeFranco video that I watched on YouTube that regarded that actual question. And he was wondering if, if it was, is, is it going to come down to you wearing like a Nike t-shirt and that gets flagged because you're showing that logo that you don't own on your channel? I mean, is, is that something that I, I don't know? And it, it depends really on where they decide to draw the line. Um, and Gerald had a question too earlier because when I was talking about how you had to prove that things were yourself, he's go. his question was simply, how do you prove that? Uh, Gerald, Good darn question, because I have no clue how you end up proving that your own work, your own creative work that went into a video that you didn't borrow anything from, how do you go about proving that? It's almost like you're guilty and you have to prove your innocence. And that's like ass backwards. Sorry, it is. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's one way to look at it, Chris, certainly. Uh, and I think that's already been kind of quoted in the in the comments about, you know, guilty until proved innocent. I, I think it's more likely that you would be asked to basically state like you do with all your videos anyway particularly mm -hmm. when you do a live stream where you know you you actually say i know i'm not going to be doing any like anything that was it um is against the the terms of condition or the the, the kind of the youtube thing right what, what's it called um it's policy yeah the, the, the policy yeah so I actually think the majority of these things will affect not the woodworking making community. Actually, I think when it gets down to brass tacks, I would, tacks, hope. I would I hope. Think, I think it's going to be the gamers um, because they're using the the footage from games and the, you know the bloggers. They, there's big money in gaming, so yep. there's that's more likely to because at the end of the day, when when you when you kind of get into copyright and breaching copyright and being naughty and all the rest of it, um, it's all about the money. 
money versus effort what is the effort of that brand going after you compared to what they're either losing or going to get back and are they likely to get it back right you know and what if, yeah, if go the ahead. answer is you know it's only a little bit we'll get very little back it will take ages and we've got to put all this time and effort into it we can't be bothered it's not worth the hassle we'll let it slide um yeah whereas and... if it's actually loads of people doing it and they're losing loads of money and they can chase a thousand people a thousand channels with the same amount of effort going after one then they will do yeah and youtube direct that uh address that directly um and if richard if you would like i mean i'm just trying to pass on the information that came from the horse's mouth today so i, I actually have it written down here um th the question was so what would happen with article 13 there their stance on this is that the proposed version of Article 13 um, would basically eliminate um, their existing notice and takedown system, as well as every other platform's existing notice and takedown system. I mean, because YouTube does, I think, a fairly decent job of policing their content when it comes to copyright. I wouldn't say it's 100%. And I wouldn't say that it's beautifully done, but they they try, okay, or at least they attempt to try. Um, but they say that is going to basically go down. This would make platforms such as YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud, Daily Motion, Reddit, Snapchat liable at the moment that a video is uploaded for any copyright infringements in uploads from users, creators, and artists. Platforms, including YouTube, would be forced to block the majority of uploads given the uncertainty and the complexity of copyright ownership. Exactly. So that's and basically them just punting going, considering how difficult this would be, we're going to punt. We're just going to block it. Yeah, it's not, it's not worth the hassle of us getting into yeah. this minefield. So we exactly. just block it. And yep. Yeah, that's the danger. That's the, the overriding danger. Particularly, like I said, with like the gaming channels, the, the movie review, yeah. um, the teardowns, the, the newsy type channels like Philip DeFranco's and, and all these sorts of things where they're using clips from TV, clips from movies, clips, memes, all that sort of stuff. Because... Yep they they haven't created that whereas if we go back to the banana thing if steve makes his banana video in his workshop and i make a banana video in my workshop right that's not me using steve's copyrighted material and actually i, no, I don't I, know how i, I don't know how whether how this would pan out in the videos but if i was to go into set my camera up on like an overhead like a, a painting and drawing thing and i draw mickey mouse that's mm -hmm. not me breaching Disney's copyright. No, because I'm drawing the picture. And actually, if you go to any of the parks where they can, where they teach you how to draw the um, the characters, the last thing they tell you to do is sign it with your name because you drew the mouse or the character yeah. or whatever it is. Right. So it's a bit like painters and forgers. Now, yeah, you can do an absolute a hundred indis hundred percent indistinguishable replica copy of a the Mona, Lisa. the Mona Lisa or I was going to say an existing copyrighted protected piece uh, of piece, work. Yeah. And you're not liable for anything because you've put the effort in and you've done all the work until you sell you try it, and the Mona palm Lisa. it off as a genuine. That's yeah. when the, because the reason for that is because there's good potentially money involved and somebody's losing out. So somebody gets annoyed. So then they start to chase it. Nobody well, chases anything when there's no money involved. Exactly. Exactly. There was no copyright issue on YouTube at all until they brought out the money issue. Well, and yeah, here, but here, here's an example of where that, that didn't work and how this and how something could be affected. Um, do you guys remember back when the ice bucket challenge was going around? It was, it was a thing that people yeah, yeah, yeah. did to raise money for, uh, for a ALS. ALS, right. There was a similar campaign and I don't remember it cause I'm just not really into that scene. I'm, you know, I guess I'm getting old, but there was, um, there was a music, uh, a piece of music that was tied to dance where people were putting up videos that had that uh, a piece of that song in it that they were dancing to. And it was very much along the lines of an ice bucket challenge. It was, you know, no more than 60 seconds of this piece of music. And apparently the artist didn't care. The record label didn't care because the intention was to raise money for a cause. Okay. But neither the artist or the record company or the licensing companies signed off on that ever. So that movement that happened, that was so widespread that raised so much money would never happen under these rules because it would never be allowed to be released in the first place. Do you follow me? That's 
yeah, and that kind of ties in with something following on from Steve's question um, about the the visuals or the uh, the audio. And when I mentioned the the streamers and the gamers, um, he's he said on there that the um, the manufacturers love those um, the streamers because it's good advertising for them. Oh, absolutely. And I suspect that te- initially that will all stop. That it, it, for them, it will be another adpocalypse. Mm-hmm. But then, a bit like the the music, um, you'll get whitelisted. Yeah. So if you're using certain kind, uh, that's what's going to happen, and that's what's going to take the time. So I think initially there's just going to be the door will close, and then gradually it will open back up again as you start to go through the hoops. As because, people as people tend to kind of shuffle themselves and and go through the system and and realize things are unreasonable and this is reasonable, exactly. this isn't, and so the 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 tight knot they tie at the beginning becomes very loose towards exactly. the end where it's, it's very similar, but a little different than what we're currently used to. But it's kind of one of those things that you have to go through. And my only, my only worry about that, Richard is when you have, when, when it's governmental agencies that are doing this, they are notoriously slow at refining their process. And so it could be years. Well, um, that's the thing because this, you know, this, everyone thinks this is an overnight thing. Yeah, you know, no, it's, it's, not. it's, it's a, it, this would, initially started in a, i think it was about 2006 or 7 this has yep. been going on for donkey's years um to get to where we are and everyone's just either knew nothing about it or they just buried their head in the sand assuming that nothing would happen and and finally it's here and now in the last what two three months mm-hmm. everyone's gone absolutely mental because it's suddenly got to the point where mm-hmm. oh, this is going to happen and now everyone's S- kind of panicking so yeah. does this mean then at Maker Central, that there's going to be a cage and a special stage just for EU members. <laughs> <laughs> only yeah. if they're only if they're a member yeah. of the if they're a member of the Parliament. Yeah, and put you them have in to have there. a special code to get in. No, 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 no. I mean, no. I'm thinking about a dunking booth. If you're a part of the EU, <laughs> EU <laughs> Parliament yeah, and you want to, and you want yeah. and, you, and you want to get into a dunking booth at Maker Central to raise some money, brother, we've got a way for you to do that. Um, yeah, that's only <laughs> only if the only if the dunking bucket is full of Guinness. All right, uh, we're running. Uh, uh, spe- uh, speaking, uh, speaking of uh, uh, Maker Central, uh, I think me and Steve might as well announce it now. We're going to be doing a uh, the, the No Licky Lips Donut Challenge at Maker Central. Oh God! Uh, oh, are we? <laughs> I thought that was yeah. a UKIS thing. I uh, don't even ask me. I will lose. Steve, Steve, Steve's only just found out about it. <laughs> if if you hand me a powdered do- sugar news. donut and you tell me not to lick my lips, I will lose big time. Um, I, I guess the only way to to wrap up this conversation and to talk about it because I think we've exposed the best to our the best of our ability. And granted, it may not be much, but I think we've. Kind of, if, pe- if people were not aware of what Article 13 is, I think they kind of get a gist of it now. Uh, there are links down in the description today, so if you want to learn more about it, there there are source links from YouTube, from Philip DeFranco, from several other content creators that are down below. Click on them, and you, you can get the story from you know other people besides us if you'd like. I mean, we're not certainly not going to try to hoard this and make this our thing. <laughs> Let's be honest, we're just not that serious. Um, but I think. Um, I promised earlier that that I would I would share with you uh, some information that it was you know obviously given to me from YouTube about what we could do to s- make these changes you know to what's going on um, different than how they are currently scribed um, and YouTube says this and I'm quoting again. It's important that policy makers hear and see that real people could be negatively impacted if Article 13 goes into effect as currently written by the Parliament. There are a lot of creators out there speaking up about this, and they go on and list a whole bunch of people, and I'm not going to even bother. Um, um, This is why, whether you're a creator or a viewer, you need to make your voice heard now by either making a video or supporting a video that has been made about Article 13 vocally. That, which means leave a comment, put put your voice out there about if some. And I, I'm not begging you to do so today, so you know, back off. Um, but I'm talking about maybe the links down below. Let your voice be heard there. They also suggest that you tweet your thoughts about Article 13, you know, your own opinion, using the hashtag Save Your Internet. And they implore you that if you want to join the movement or if you want to say something and make your voice be heard, go to YouTube's website and they have a, they have a specific URL um, that I, th- I think I, I maybe it may be in the description too. It may be the second one down uh, that I listed for YouTube, uh, but it's in case it's not there. Here it is, www.youtube.com forward slash 
save your internet. They're imploring you to go to that internet address for more information on how you can have your voice heard. So that was the information that was given to me from YouTube, and I'm just passing it on to you guys. So there you go. The, the dark side of me can't help but think, though, with that, is that YouTube getting some publicity from this as well you know well, using well, hashtags I, yeah well, you know? Steve, I, well Steve, I, 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 mentioned, I mentioned at the beginning that this would not be a yeah. big deal with youtube unless it was going to affect their pocketbook so let's remember yeah, that yeah. as well yeah. but also Some, i don't think the ramifications of what's going to go on uh only affect youtube it, it will affect us as well as yeah. content creators and also as viewers so i mean there, there should be some level of interest there whether it's it's just not the bank account issue that youtube is facing let's let's be honest somebody um on one of those videos um that we, we're referencing made a very good point in terms of as the internet has grown over the last decade with the you know thing with like with facebook facebook is now the way it works is has become natural every, everyday life it is what it is that's what right. a lot of people it's all a lot of people have ever known um you know we're, we're the four of us are all of an age where we remember pre-internet days yeah you know, we, we all remember what it was like when you had to go into a box and use a telephone or or walk into a library to look or, up something or, or, yeah exactly <laughs> rather than pull a box out of your pocket yeah the dewey decimal system is dead when, anyway, go ahead. When, <laughs> 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 and Dewey's not the only system I know as an yeah. ex-librarian. Anyway, um, <laughs> we, when you get to the point of such ingrained social norms, the the way things are done, people expect it. TV suffers. Yep. TV TV ratings are already suffering because of the internet and the likes of YouTube, Instagram TV. Um, um, all these Amazon channels, Netflix, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, the the newspapers are suffering because yeah. we, we don't go to the corner store anymore. We don't have the kid on his BMX rock past our house every morning and, and trash in the mailbox. Trust me, we, radio radio is dying. So I, I know I got out exactly. at the right time. Yeah, it's just it's when, these, when these mediums have, are going away. When you have such a powerful mass exodus over to other mediums, the next natural step is always regulation and oversight and all the rest of it. But, you know, radio had their own overseeing thing. TV yep. have got their own overseeing thing. Yep. Now the internet is having to have it because, you know, the governments are going, this isn't on. We don't like this. And at the end of the day, they're the ones with the power. Whether we realise or like it or not, it just is. So it's, regulation is, is going to have to happen. And that's... Right. You know, and what we've got to remember is the internet is in its infancy compared to TV. TV yeah. is what a hundred years old, almost. Yeah, I mean, and, if not, then yes. And and you know, and radio is older than that. Um, exactly. And the internet is basically still in nappies by comparison. Yeah, so it's going to be one and, of those. And in America, um, both television and radio are governed by a, a, a governmental agency that, by constitution, has no absolute right to exist. Uh, because the freedom of the press and the freedom to uh, speak your mind and say what you want to when you want to is ingrained in every uh, American. That is part of the Constitution, but yet we have the Federal Communication Commission that decides uh, what you can and cannot hear or see. And and that has come about, but also, is this right. just the start of that process for the Internet? Yep, it is. You know, there's been fights with the media and the government and the law for umpteen times in the in the part is this just one of those for the internet you know, exactly, I, exactly. I, I genuinely yeah. don't think it's going to affect us anywhere near as badly as as people are predicting i think because when you look at youtube you've got the philip defranco um mm -hmm. type newsy channels you've got the the gamer streamer channels you've got the artists doing covers you've got the all Pew these things the which, pewdiepies the uh, you which know. are taking Right. Um, viewers nice stats. Yeah. from the music industry, from the movie business, from TV channels, they're getting the hump and they're trying to do their thing under, I suspect, under the guise of protecting themselves. Yep. But for us, as just, you know, Jack and Jill in their shed or wherever making stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to have that huge, huge impact. Well, um, I know. I don't think so. But I think like, we just saw with, like you mentioned at the beginning of this, the adpocalypse. I think we're all going to have to go through a wee bit of that if this, you know, thing goes down. But you, 
Exactly. You can't jump in a boat and cross the ocean without a few waves. Exactly. Yeah. As long as we all kind of <laughs> very good. Uh, Richard, that's as, as long as we all kind of accept that, but keep it realistic. You know, don't be afraid and yeah. panicking. Yeah, don't yeah. We've all been nothing. through the audio thing. We've all had a video nicked. We've all yeah. had, you know, a video rejected and had to wait for thing. And I think the bigger you get, the more it happens. Probably. So if you so, can I mean, stick at it. Stick at it. Educate yourself is, uh, is I guess, you know, the best I can say at this point in time, if you want to. Um, and if, uh, if you're interested and you want to have your voice heard, follow one of the links down below and, uh, and, and have your voice be heard. I mean, other than that, I think we covered what could be coming down the pike, but as Leona mentioned earlier, um, if this thing does indeed pass, it probably, in, I mean, if it passes, you know, at the end of the year, I mean, there may be some countries that, you know, initially initiate it immediately, but I think the majority of them are going to wait the two year period before they actually do. So this may not be anything that affects anybody for another couple of years, but two years down the line, they're going to be, be people pulling their hair out over this and wondering why and what the heck and blah, 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 blah. But when they could have their voice heard now. So if you're going to say something, do it now. If you really don't care and want to leave it up to others, Hey, that's your call too. I mean, we're just putting the information out there so you can do what you want to do with it. Sure. I think I, I we should see. take Leona's uh, Leona's view on it. The the Irish attitude. I sure to be grand. Have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And and who and who's gonna and who's gonna say, Steve, you're a bad man over that? I mean, it's like I mean, come in. That's what well, you want to do. You won't be out of scene anyway. Yeah. Well, if that's what you want to do, then man, that's your right to do whatever you want to freaking do. Uh, Anyway, uh, Richard, I think we've wrapped this up and probably talked it to death. So if you want to crack on with something else, let's do so. Uh, that means I've got to go down there. Do we have anything this week, Jamie, for your page? Yes, we do. We've got something. Jamie's page. Are you going to mention the T-shirts? Must must you uh, sing that every week? Uh, I mean, amongst, is it really? uh, oh, mama mia, mama mia. <laughs> amongst other things, we've got uh, got quite a selection this week, actually. Uh, awesome. First thing we've already mentioned, make essential. If you're not going or not planning on going, change your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find out Join more information in at uh, makeessential.co.uk. All information over at that website. Uh, secondly, there's a guy called uh, Steve Jones, a.k.a. The Skew. Uh, he hit 10,000 uh, likes on Facebook. So, well done, Steve. Uh Next, we've got uh, there's a group over on Facebook called Tools with Fools or Fools with Tools or something. <laughs> I love those guys. Um, it's basically hosted by a, a bunch of guys that run a podcast sponsored by Inaudible. Um, and they're doing something, uh, or I think it's James from Morton Make, he's running something that's basically a secret Santa, but it's actually called a, a treasure trade. And it's going on at the moment over in, on the group on Facebook. So firstly, go and like that group because it's an awesome bunch of guys over there and girls. Absolutely, absolutely is. And uh, Ooh, another it, group to get it's, out. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the treasure trade is basically coming to a close uh, now. So if you have participated in that, you got until the fourteenth of December. So uh, come on, yep, chop chop, get your uh, get your stuff out and uh, sort it out. Uh, next on the list, we have the the Makers International podcast T-shirts, also known as Makers Rhapsody T-shirts. <laughs> oh, mamma mia, mamma mia. So, yeah. If you, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Jamie. I, I just find those, like, hysterical. Just the fact that we did that. <laughs> So and I, if, it's one of the pardon me for laughing at ourselves because I I'm sorry I think that's funny but go ahead. <laughs> if uh, if you happen to tune in to Sebastian Alari's episode last week, you would have heard the uh, the Queen jokes all the way through the episode of us singing Queen <laughs> the Rhapsody all the way through. Uh, well, basically, what's happened is Alex Shack helped us uh, oh, superimpose our heads onto a T-shirt and make a T-shirt. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're basically got them for sale over on our website. So if you go to our website at makersinternationalpodcast.com, there'll be a link on the top of the um, page that just says T-shirts. You click that, and it will take you to a Teespring um, site where you can go and get that. And last but definitely not least, 
we have a huge giveaway going on um, for the month of December. The giveaway I mean, I mean. is going on as of right now. Uh, the link is live. It ends midnight uh, UK time, December 22nd. Um, and you can, it's a one winner takes all. Uh, and the prizes are a tub of Yorkshire Grit Original, a tub of Yorkshire Grit Microfine, two hybrid pen blanks from Pan from Highland Boxes. Um, you have a custom mark, uh, custom marking knife from Alex T, uh, 2Q. Um, and some Mother of Pearl inlay from Scott Grove, and a custom podcast Tumblr from Chad at Minecrafting. So, wait, wait a minute. Are you sure we want to give this away? Because I could kind of use all of that. I, I really I'll, I'll that tell you, I've, uh, <laughs> I've, yeah, I might closed it down actually. Oh, yeah, forget, you, forget that last one. No, <laughs> Jamie already posted it. Darn it, Jamie. Right. In the future, communicate. Okay, come on. <laughs> right. So again, what you've got to do is go to the website at makersinternationalpodcast.com and again at the top of the link uh, top of the page there's a link that just says huge giveaway in big capital letters you t you click on that it will take you to a gleam app and you just basically follow click here and it, the first one is uh, check out scott grow's website and you click on the different actions to get different entries and there's six ways to enter if you click all six you get six entries Awesome. So that's basically it. I'll post links to it over on the Facebook page and all sorts. Um, hey, Jamie, I'm sorry if I missed it. I was blowing my nose. But did you say when the contest is going to end? Uh, oh, yeah, it ends on the December 22nd at midnight UK time. And we'll announce the winner on the 23rd? Yes, and we will announce the winner on the 23rd on, okay, the, on that it. Sunday show. Thank you. Um, I, will post, I haven't done it yet, but I will post pictures, um, which will be out. Oh, I'll do it now after this show. Um, so they will be there for when the show gets released on the Wednesday of the actual blanks that Pam is donating and the marking knife that Alex is donating. Awesome. And it's, you know, when Alex and Pam, thank you very much. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah. The, the, the marking knife that Alex has donated has got a carbon fiber inlay. So Ooh, you know, it's, it's incredible. So it's uh, special. I haven't seen the uh, the marking knife one, but you you showed us the pictures of the um, Richard. Don't look at it because because awesome. we'll never give it away if you see it. I know you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> put that in the basket. <laughs> I've, I've I've seen some of these other marking knives, and I yeah, I can quite I can quite believe that. We're giving it away, Richard. Just don't. That don't I can't believe. Yeah, the, don't yeah. don't and don't I'll, don't do it to yourself. Also, better mention as well. This is worldwide as well, so it doesn't matter if you're Europe or. Uh, USA, even Canadians can win. <laughs> so, so article thirteen right. doesn't affect this. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good thing Canadians are nice. Go ahead. A. <laughs> hey. A. <Hey. Hey. laughs> <laughs> if if a Canadian didn't win, they would apologise to us. Say, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't win. <laughs> hey. What's up, you hoser? Right. Come on, eh? uh, right. Anyway, my <laughs> really? uh, my, my uh, uh, right. My shout out. My shout out has actually already been mentioned once already uh, today during the show. It's uh, Charlie Kachurik. Kachurik, yay! Kachurik, uh, also known as Jack Bench Woodworking. Um, he's known for doing some absolutely incredible veneer work. Um, however, this time he he's made a. Uh, he basically just made a, an awesome uh, hybrid bandsaw box with a, a veneered separator in the middle of it. Uh, I don't really want to say too much, but you should definitely go and check him out. He's, a, he's an incredible guy, and he's got a great, great channel. He does awesome work. And he's a, yeah, he's so, a super, super nice guy. Yeah, so it's Jack Bench Woodworking on YouTube. Absolutely. Love Charlie. Steve, what about you, buddy? I'm shouting out the Naked Turner. Uh, Eric Anderson. Uh, he is a really cool wood turner, uh, very chill, chilled out, and he must have the must deepest voice. Wearing no clothes, it must be freezing. Yeah. It must be freezing. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's December. I mean, the boy's got to be cold. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What does he use to turn with? Uh, no, well, don't go there. You'll have don't to watch his there. videos and find out, won't you? <laughs> Jamie, stop it. Uh, he, he, has the, he has the deepest, sexiest voice ever on YouTube. 
and uh, he's just an awesome turner and i like watching him because he's naked <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Richard, I know you don't have a shout-out this week, so I'll go ahead and give you mine. My shout-out is um, is you, my friend. You and your Make It Happen oh. road trip. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, in, in, all, uh, in all honesty, and, and Richard knows this as well as anybody, I'm the last person to give him a compliment. Um, but... <laughs> yes, that's very true. Yeah. So it's actually but... directed at Kat, isn't it, and Jamie indirectly. Well, I do love Cat. Jamie and you are iffy, but Cat's fantastic. Um, but it was Richard's road trip to Margate to go visit Jamie. And I thought you guys did an awesome job, but that was a great video. So if you haven't seen the first episode of Richard's Make It Happen Road Trip series that he shot this summer, go look at it. It's cool because, I mean, I think the next one you're going to release, is that Sophie? Uh, yes, it will be. Yeah, Soph's, Soph's trip, so it's yeah. going to be Make It Soph after this. It's I just think... I love seeing videos where guys do, um, you know, collaborations and get together and just kind of pal around and do stupid stuff. And I know both of you, so I know that you did absolutely stupid stuff. And so I really enjoyed that. <laughs> well, I mean, Jamie will tell you, actually. I, I was just going to say, I do need to say, in Richard's defense, when it comes to the bit with me sitting like a wally on this, on the sofa, <laughs> like, doing all this sort of stuff. <laughs> Which was funny I, as well. I, I, was actually, I was actually in a cast and it was kind of like, Richard needed it because we forgot to kind of show that <laughs> stuff while he was here. But I, I love how you did your Vanna White, your Pat Sajak kind of hey, here is here it is, and you displayed it. <laughs> Jamie, that was funny. But no, uh, actually, awesome video, guys. So you know, thumbs up to both of you. And I'm not going to say that next week. So just get over it. That's fair enough. Well, Ed, Personally, was... Jamie, I thought you looked like looked like the constipated girl from uh, uh, the uh, game show. Do you know the? Price is family right. fortunes so price is right where she she demonstrates stuff she just looked constipated steve yeah, that's, yeah. steve that's a uh, vanna white and i think i already mentioned that but that's okay <sighs> nobody ever listened to oh, bully, bully from bullseye oh. <laughs> Shush. that's probably a stupid american program is it <laughs> yeah it is why would i watch that why would i watch that you just referred to it, so I'm assuming you've watched it. You no, I was on about the English dummy. version, obviously. That, that was a, a, an American cultural reference that nobody outside the U.S. got. Yeah, nobody cares either So uh, that in America. So go ahead, move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, I'm gonna do, I'm not, I, like you said, I, I haven't got a shout-out this week, but I was going to plug the you know, those videos that we're referencing in the... Um, in the description which we should talk about article 30 there's loads of videos on on youtube um just like anything on the internet you've got to go to several sources not just one so to get your whole to... story before you make up your mind exactly i mean i've referenced quite a few there yeah i mean go to the search bar on youtube type article 13 and you'll have plenty of choices i just grabbed the ones that i thought were kind of sort of entertaining and credible at the same time so but you know your choice is going to be different than mine so do do that thing definitely cool well i do think that that pretty much wraps up the show this week has, has anyone got anything else they want to to talk about no nope. yeah, when are we going to talk about hangar 13 <laughs> i want to talk warehouse 13. i, 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 I want to talk about the uh, guinness at, at maker central and why some people are don't like guinness <clears throat> that are happen to be in the chat today but we're going to let that go until possibly oh, oh, next week oh, oh, who's that no, 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 no. We're going we're gonna to let that go until possibly next week because that could take up quite some time. And we're done today. So, Ooh, no, they didn't. Oh, yes, they did. And they did it on your live stream last night, Mr. Twidell. So, we will talk. Well, we could potentially touch on that <laughs> subject briefly in the. Oh, no, that's a lengthy we conversation. We don't have um, <laughs> Patreon, but anyone listening live will be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> <Check it out. laughs> Potentially. So let's yeah. let's maybe let's maybe do that because yeah. yeah why sure. not? Why would go, we... go ahead and Google Makers International Patreon and good luck oh, to you. Oh, by the way, <laughs> uh, we are not affiliated by Guinness. No, we're not. So Yet. please, so YouTube, please don't Yet. block this video. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet, but we're Excellent. trying. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about that at a later date and uh, and see what happens after we stop the show. But uh, yeah, I think that does wrap it up 
just about. So uh, thanks for listening. We will be back here next week with some other topic about something else that we don't know much about. So uh, until then, <laughs> we'll speak to you soon. Cheers, everybody. Have a great week. Take it easy. Bye. Oh, <laughs> <Our> section. <laughs>